Okay, so if, well, if you have questions, just go ahead and feel free to ask, right? So let me show you the, let's go through these demos here. They don't take too long. Um, and you wanna probably, what we're gonna do is circulate around the room and it's best to be, to do it around the, the edges here. We'll walk around, not, not quite yet, but once you just kind of get away from here, because I'm going to turn this thing up. And what you're hearing there here is 700 hertz. Okay, 700 cycles per second, right? The wavelength, which you can calculate, is a half a meter, roughly half a meter, about like this. The separation distance here is a meter. This is about a meter. So we got a wavelength that's something like this. So you can see here. Oh, I'm putting putting the same signal through both of these loudspeakers. Same amplitude. Same. same frequency and same phase, okay? So they're going like this, right? Now, if I'm over here, like where Steve is, let's say, you're hearing the sound from both of those loudspeakers. You can see that the one, the one to our left is farther away, right? So the sound wave coming here, you hear the sum of the two sound waves. They're gonna be out of phase right? And if the path difference here is half a meter, what's going to happen? Right? When these two sound waves combine down here, if it's a half a wavelength in the, the path difference there, when they combine here, they're going to be out of phase. So you're going to get, you're going to tend to get destructive interference. It's not going to be perfect, okay? One of the reasons it's not going to be perfect is, and we talked about this in class, is the left speaker is farther away than this one, so the amplitude will be a little less. But let's see how good it is. Let me turn it up here, and it's best for you guys to circulate. Just pick a direction, like let's say clockwise, and just you can walk through this. And what you're going to hear is this. What you want to listen for are pressure nulls, okay, where the pressure is approximately zero, and it's going to get really close to zero here. If you're careful, and by being careful, you don't want to expose both of your transducers, you know, your sensors here, your ears, we call them, this way, because I'm, there's a spatial separation there. You want to turn this way to accurately hear the note, and you'll see that the sound is, you won't be able to hear it, okay? It's that good. And you'll, um, you'll hit the places where there's zero sound and it'll occur at several places here. What happens, what do you think should happen here when I'm right symmetrically located here with the two drivers? It's, it's going to be the loudest, right, okay. But you'll find that there are two nodes, they're here, there are surfaces that come at minimum, minimums, okay, they're not technically zeros, but they, they're surfaces that come out here and they go, one of them's going to be around here and I think one of them's around there. So listen for that. Let me turn it up. That should be good. And why don't you just walk and you can stop and go back and forth. Walk slow. You want to walk slowly. Oh, go ahead. Now I want to tell you, that half of the room is better than this half, okay? And I think it's because of these windows here and maybe the door. I don't know. I wish we had set this experiment up there <laughs> on the other side, okay? But particularly here, you'll be able to get it so it's almost zero sound. Pretty amazing. Like how yeah, so what you're doing, you're walking through an interference pattern. Go ahead. So does everybody hear the, the nulls? Okay. So often you can look in books and you'll see interference patterns for light. Um, uh, ripple tanks. You guys ever seen a, the surface waves? These thin tanks where you have two dabbers going like this, each sending out this nice you know, circular wave. And you'll see that there are places here where, it's, where there's no surface motion. It's, it's, it's quiescent, right? So that's where you'd want to put a ship if these were giant, <laughs> okay? So this is the acoustic analog of that. Here you hear it, you actually walk through it. Now I want to do something different here. Next thing I want to do is, watch what I'm going to do here, okay? 
This is the, you know, the signal generator to the amplifier going to each speaker. Watch what I'm doing here. Can everybody see this? I disconnect this loudspeaker and I go like that. <laughs> so what's different now? They're out of phase. Instead of doing this, right, they're doing this. 180 degrees out of phase. Now, the most dramatic place here is right here. What's going to happen right there? Yeah, and it's going to this time, because they're both the same distance, it should be a really good null. So let's, let's walk through again. Now with these things being 180 degrees out of phase, you should hear a really nice null there. You know, essentially zero. And then you'll find that where the, max, the maximums and the minimums are interchanged, you'll find that there's two, there's two nulls out here, but they're where the maxes were before. So let me turn it up. That should be good. How come I'm not hearing? I'm not. What's going on here? Oh, I see. I see one of the problems is people walking in front of it. That's a little bit of a problem. Okay. Yeah. I didn't notice that. But that, I want to make sure everyone, make sure you hear this one. This one should be really good. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, uh, any questions so far? Okay, so next, what we're going to do is, instead of 700 hertz, we're going to go to 7,000 hertz, otherwise known as 7 kilohertz, okay? Now the wavelength, there's the sound. If this gets loud for you, you got to tell me, okay? Because I'm an old person, my hearing, you know, 8 kilohertz, once I get 7, 8 kilohertz, it's really going down, okay? That's what happens when you age. One of the things that happens. One of many, <laughs> okay? So if this gets painful to you, you've got to let me know, okay? But here's 10 times the frequency. So the wavelength, instead of being 50 centimeters, is going to be 5 centimeters. So now, if you're at a, a pressure node, let's say here, how much do you have to move to get to the next pressure note? Very little. The path difference only has to, you know, it has to be just, it's, um, we're looking at very small, very small path difference here. So, um, I'm sorry, the change in path difference. So if we're to know where the, the path difference here is a half, you know, um, an odd number of half wavelengths, um, the next one up in angle here is going to correspond to a, a change in the path difference like this. So it's going to be jammed packed with nodes. So is that, are you guys okay with that? That's pretty loud, but it gets, it falls off quickly. It attenuates more. The high frequencies attenuate more. We'll be calculating that later in the course. Yeah, there's definitely an effect of people walking in front. I can hear <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we have to try to do something about that. So what you want to notice is you move your head very little and you're walking through these nulls. You can hear the nulls. Now there's something else that you probably don't, that I need to tell you, because you probably aren't aware of. What about the direct, forget the nulls right now. What about just the directionality of the sound? What's it like here Almost compared to... You know, over here, it's, like really it's a lot small. more directional. And this is a general property of waves. Waves spread out, they diffract. But the amount that they diffract depends upon the wavelength. If the wavelength's really small, it's, it's, going to be, um, it's going to diffract very little. And a laser beam is constructed to have, creates these parallel wave fronts here that are traveling and the wavelength is really tiny so lasers will diffract but there's as you know there's very little very little diffraction the sound we have big bigger wavelengths here but we can tell the difference at the smaller wavelengths it's more directional than what you heard at 700 hertz now should i do this 
I, I, well, I should go back to where we were. Sorry, now we're back to, but does it really matter here? Not for seven kilohertz, <laughs> you know. It's just we're loaded with nulls, so it's not going to make, you know, you have to do a careful experiment to detect the difference. Okay, finally, the last frequency we're going to do is, uh, hold on a second here. Now, 70 hertz. Can you guys hear that? Okay, it's loud right here, but it's fine. So now the wavelength is what? Five meters. It's huge. Very big. All right. So I'm driving. I look at the nubs here. This is in phase. They're going like this. Five coast. Now I would like for you to let's let's walk around and see what, what we hear. And I have to crank this up. Yeah. And now the people will affect it less at this long wavelength. Do you hear any nulls? <laughs> no, the wavelength's too big. We can't, it's impossible to find a location with a pass difference of, a, of half a wavelength because the wavelength is so big. There are no zeros, no nulls. What about the directionality? Keep walking, you know, what, how, how's the direction, how's directional is the sound compared to like the seven kilohertz? Yeah, it's, and this is again, this is diffraction. The longer the wavelength, the greater the diffraction is. Now, finally, one more thing here, and this is a practical thing. Um, when we were doing some of this research, we had to deal with an audio uh, retailer in town, and the guy told one of my students that the most common problem for people who buy audio equipment is They'll call him up and they'll say, we're not hearing any bass. We have to crank the bass way up. There's something wrong. Something wrong with the equipment. Well, here's, it's not the equipment, okay? It's the person operating the equipment. So here we are, okay, low frequency. And if I do this, okay, I flip the polarity. So now it's going to go like this, right? But the, the wavelength now is very large. So on the scale of the wavelength, these things are, uh, relative to the wavelength, these are close together. So to a first order approximation, if I got two drivers going like this, and if they're on top of each other, they cancel each other out. So it's, it happens a little bit at the higher frequencies, but it's much more dominant at the, it's dominant at the lower frequencies. When you have very long wavelengths here, and you have loudspeakers that are out of phase, the bass is going to tend to cancel. You know it's going to happen right here. You know it's going to happen. There's no question about it, right? And most people will sit anyway when they're listening in audio. They'll be sitting for a stereo system, at least not a quad. They'll be sitting around here. So let me, let's see this demonstration. So again, let me say this again. We know with them being out of phase like that, we're going to get zero sound right here. The point here is not just that, it's because of the long wavelength, it's that region of reduced amplitude is going to extend out here like this. This demonstration doesn't work well, i, I got to warn you, it's because these are not really good woofers, they're not woofers, we need, they don't generate low frequency sound very well, There's, and I have to turn this up loud enough that they start to distort. So you'll even hear some sound, even right here, and it's because of the, um, because of the distortion. So let's do this. Let's first go back, try to remember what, what this, now they're in phase, okay? And you can circulate around a little bit if you like. And then I'm going to um, flip the phase, okay? So trying to get in your head what this is. Oh, in fact, you know, now that I've got more than one person in here, we can, <laughs> see, I can't really, do this because I'm just one person. Why don't you guys stay fixed for a moment and tell me what you tell me the difference that you hear, okay? I'm gonna flip the phase. Can you tell the difference? Higher frequency. 
Yeah, if you hear the, what you're hearing is the, dis the distortion is higher frequency. But yeah, see that's, we, we're not, we, we need to improve the drivers here for this demonstration. And I've, I'm, I'm working on it every year a little bit more. But anyway, that's what you're hearing there is this tendency to cancel. That these things are going like this now. And because of the long wavelength, it's as if they're sort of on top of each other to a rough approximation. Yeah, so why don't you guys now go here. Now you'll hear, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very dramatic on the, on the, in the symmetry, act, symmetry plane here. The symmetrical location, yeah. So you can imagine people sitting around thinking that, you know, they just bought some really bad, they spent all this money on bad equipment. And they would need two speakers and then one of them would have to be hooked up wrong, right? It's all relative, yeah. I mean, they're both, it's, you know. They would need two sources though, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah, right. Yeah. So he, this, according to this retailer, that's the most common problem he has with dealing with customers, is they don't respect the polarity when they hook these things up. You know, black to black and red to red. Or, and it's, all, it's only a relative thing. There's no magical thing about black or red. It's just you want whatever the polarity is there that you've chosen, you want it to be the same there. So I'll go back. Now they're, now they're going like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, any questions or comments or anything? It's good that you guys get to see this. And like I said, you're going to be working in here, so that, a little bit. Not like thesis research. Not like we worked on that. But you'll at least get the chance to use the chamber to take data, and then and then you'll analyze it. All right. Okay.